So the company would say, we will achieve, we will try to achieve uh, a 16% growth rate uh, next year. But uh, there is a problem with uh, average sales forecast. There are problems with average sales forecast. Average, when you are making an average, you are not considering the uh, business cycle or sales cycle. Uh, that means in different months or year or in different segment of time, your sales will go up and go down. You are not considering those up and down. And you are choosing one figure, 16%, based on the historical sales figure. So uh, now, now let me summarize. When you do arbitrary sales, the negative thing is most of the time company cannot achieve those because the company is setting a target very high. The benefit of arbitrary sales is it can adjust the problem from the Jesse meeting. It can adjust the problem with business cycle. So when you have business cycle up and down, which is not reflected in 16% average from the historical sales, but the arbitrary sales, which is basically discussed among the top management, including the national sales manager, they would be able to give feedback that no, we can we can achieve better. We can actually look into uh, a higher sales growth rate. So arbitrary sales has positive and negative side. Jesse meeting is generally driven by the sales force. The good thing is this is the rate usually and regularly achieved by the sales team. But the bad thing is they generally underestimate the achievement, the rate that they can achieve. And the historical sales is generally good since it is taken a historical average from the sales that has been already achieved. So you have an experience already with whether you can achieve it or not. But the problem is it generally exclude the impact of business cycle or other uncertainties. So what most of the companies do uh, is, sorry, it's not most of the companies, generally the large companies. What the large companies do, they will use a weighted average of the three. So national sales manager now will submit a report to the board of directors that we have collected three different methods of sales growth and we are applying certain technique weights to calculate the ultimate sales growth rate. So weight of one is let's say 20%. One is the arbitrary sales. Weight of two is 50%. The company is still giving the highest weight to the sales officer's opinion. And weight of three is 30%. 30% weight given to the fast, uh, the historical, uh, historical sales rate. So depending on the, you see the total percentage of the weight is 100%. 20 plus 20 plus 50 plus uh, 30 is 100 percent so in order to uh, achieve the uh, target the sales target company has used and weighted average method the weights are given 20 percent 30 percent and 50 percent now these weights obviously will change depending on different companies and the opinion of the managers but whoever is presenting these to the top management they have to explain how they come up with this 20%, 50%, and 30%. So the figure that I've used here, this is basically an example uh, I'm giving. So once again, so we are starting with sales forecasting and there are a number of challenges in sales forecasting. Uh, the most important challenge in my opinion is to come up with the sales growth rate after taking opinion from number of corners. So you need to look into what the managers say, what the sales officers saying, what the top management are expecting, and and other relevant issues. Let me let me tell you one more thing before we go to the next step. Sales forecasting is very important because uh, this information is generally shared with the financial analyst. Let me write it for you so that you uh, understand the term. Uh, there is there is something called financial analyst. Uh, analyst expectations. Okay, now what is this? Financial analyst expectation. Now, financial analysts are independent authorities. They will analyze, forecast your company's performance in order to give the message to the stock market. The stock market, most of the investors, those who have access to financial analyst expectation, they will look into the expectation and make decision. Now, financial analysts, they do not have access to, they have access to your final sales figure, 
what is the sales that you are making they have access to economic uncertainty they have access to information on other figures but they do not have access to the probability that you are assigning so let me let me show it to you this financial analyst they don't have access to this information this information belongs to the company company uses this information in order to form their own expected sales figure for the future now financial analyst they also have their own forecasting and they will do forecasting based on their own weighted average and find out the expected sales they will build their expectation based on the probability that they have achieved through their experience or their modeling now the point that i want to receive if your sales average let's say your sales growth is greater than the financial analyst expectation okay now if this is higher than let's say you want to achieve 20% but the financial analyst is expecting that it will be um maybe up to 10% this company cannot achieve more than 10% growth rate now if the financial analyst expectation is lower than your average and if the investors see that in the past you actually could not achieve what the financial analyst expected then your stock price will fall let me repeat if the financial analyst expectation is smaller than yours and if the investors see that in the past you actually did not achieve the average sales growth that you have taken then your stock price will fall because this is a negative information that the company cannot correctly forecast their sales on the other hand if the financial expectation the financial analyst expectation is higher than the company's if the financial analyst expectation is higher than what the company is achieving that may increase your stock price for short period of time but in the long run again the investors will think that this company could achieve much higher but they have wrong management so this basically indicate when the financial analyst expectation is larger than the company's average this indicates poor management quality poor management quality meaning that you could not expect or estimate your financial figures sales figure properly so you need to be very careful when you are doing this weighted average or considering sales you know this this is a very important information that's why what uh, you you can look into the uh activities of apple microsoft you know when they introduce a new product how their expectation is changing what is the expectation of the financial uh, analyst uh you, you can look into them and see you you would be surprised to see that how the stock price changes when a company offers a new product uh let let me give you an example i have i have recently seen that the uh apple's uh product price is suddenly increasing because there is a rumor in the market that apple would have uh, three different additional features with their camera in iphone that is coming up so just because a positive information coming up and the financial analyst already expecting that there would be some positive impact in their sales because they they also have this information published on bloomberg that apple has uh, asked their producers to produce i think 90 million extra pieces of the new iphone meaning that financial analyst get this impression that apple is going to make a big amount of sales in the next uh, next year therefore financial analyst adjusted their expectation that the sales is going to be superb and based on which apple's stock price is going up so this is an example of how expectation may influence your stock price you need to be very careful when you do uh, sales forecasting because if it is significantly different from the market expectation you may lose value you may lose stock price okay we have a uh, continued lecture for over uh, almost 1 hour so we want to take a break if you all agree but uh, uh, possibly let me uh, let me finish the theory part uh, give me 10 minutes after 10 minutes we'll take a big break okay let's go to the step 2 forecasting 
income statement. Now, as you know, that income statement is generally reporting three figures, income, expenses, and net income and net loss. So you are supposed to forecast all the income item or relevant income item. You're supposed to forecast all the income uh, expenses item and find out what is the net estimated profit or loss. And when you are doing the forecasting, we generally call it creating a pro forma. Uh, pro forma basically means estimation or forecasting. So pro forma income statement. This is a pro forma income statement. So often in, 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 in big companies financial statement, you see the real income statement and pro forma financial statement. Now pro forma also is a word they use when the income statement is not audited yet. So meaning that the company has uh, some estimated figure inside. Now most of the figures are already realized, but the auditing has not been done. Therefore, it is still a pro forma uh, income statement. So once again, our objective is to estimate income, estimate expenses, and come up with the net income or net loss. Now, what is the rule of thumb? We have already discussed it. Rule of thumb is, um, yeah, yeah, this mistake, I don't know how this happened. Any item directly related to sales will grow at the rate of sales. Let's say if your sales growth rate is decided after all the weighted average is 15%. So any item directly related to sales will increase by 15%. The other items will be kept as they were. So we will keep them as it is for now. And we will wait for the feedback function. Remember the feedback function, the fourth function. We'll wait for the feedback function to adjust them. So the rule of thumb is once again, any item directly related to sales will increase by the sales growth rate. Now let's go to this uh, illustration. Forecasting of income statement, the sales growth achieved, uh, so the target achieved is 10% after doing all the calculations and everything. There are some other uh, conditions given. We need additional fixed asset in order to increase 10%. I will explain this to you when I'm going through the items again. And uh, obviously, when you are increasing fixed assets, you also need to uh, uh, do something with the depreciation expense. So let's let's look into the items, how these are changing. Net sales in 2005, the figures is given. 2006, the basis is 10 percent. We are estimating for 2006. In 2005, net sales was 1500. And 2006, 10% increase, it becomes 1650. Because net sales, obviously, is directly related to sales. This is the sales item. Cost of goods sold, directly related to sales, increased by 10% from 1230 to 1353. Gross profit is just the calculation coming from 15 minus 1230 is 270. 1650 minus 1350 is 297. Fixed operating cost except depreciation is 90. These are directly connected to sales multiplied by 10%, going up to 99. Depreciation expense, as it is explained already, that if the fixed asset increases, depreciation will also increase by 10% from 50, increase by 10% to 55. Now, earnings before interest and tax, again, is the result of the calculation. So gross profit minus the fixed operating cost minus depreciation brings you EBIT. Similarly, 297 minus 99 minus 55 brings you 143. Less interest payment, 40. Now, interest related to loans, it does not directly relate to sales. Therefore, it did not increase. And interest is a financing item. I will show you later which one is operating item, which one is financing item. Normally, the operating items are the upper part of the income statement. This upper part of the income statement is the operating item, and the lower part is generally the financing item. Now, interest is a financing item. It's related to financing, debt, and equity. So interest is not directly related to sales, even though when you increase the sales, you may need debt. If you need debt, then you will increase the interest. Otherwise, you will be it will be safe. So we kept it as 40 because we need to still go through the feedback function to see whether we need extra load or not, sorry. And then EBT calculated as it is 130 minus 40, 143 minus 40. 
Taxes, 40%. Tax rate is given by the government. We have nothing to do with this. We'll just calculate and we'll go into net income. Net income is earnings before interest and tax minus the taxes, which gives you 90 minus 36 is for, uh, 54 and 103 minus 41.20 is 61.80. Next comes other financing decision. Company has to decide during their income statement forecasting whether they are giving any dividend. This company dividend is a financing function. It is not directly related to sales. It is also not indirectly related to sales. This is a completely independent item. Therefore, we could not do anything with the sales function right now. Now, after dividends, dividend payment, we kept it as it is 29 to 29. Company may even decide to reduce it in the feedback function if they want to save some money because dividend will go from your pocket to the investors. But if you need extra money for the company operation, you may reduce your dividend payment. Addition to retained earnings is 54 minus 29 is 25. 61.80 minus 29 is 32.80. Then earning per share calculated, how it is calculated? This net income after, uh, net income after all expenses divided by number of share. These are just additional figures that you have to report. Dividend per share, how much dividend you are paid divided by number of share, whatever the figure is. Number of common share outstanding is 25 million. This company has 25 million shares outstanding and they did not suggest any increase in number of shares, so it is still 25. So once again, the figures, those are directly related to sales will increase. The figures, those are not directly related to sales will be kept as it is. We will always revise these figures in the feedback function and we'll come back to the income statement in order to do revision, in order to change figure that needs to be changed before we audit our statement. The final part in the forecasting is forecasting of balance sheet. Again, the rule of thumb is saying figures directly connected to sales will increase. Figures not directly connected to sales will be kept as it is. Cash directly related to sales increased by 10 percent accounts receivable inventories these are all short-term items these are directly related to sales increased by 10 percent property plant and equipment ppe ppe i think you know what is a ppe is property plant and equipment this is basically let me write it in bracket or let me write uh, sorry uh, this is basically fixed asset. Now, net property plant and equipment, we have written net here, as you can see. Net means after deducting the depreciation. So, net PPE or net fixed asset means PPE minus depreciation. So, this is the amount of fixed asset that you still have to adjust. Uh, uh, that's why we call it net PPE. Now, remember in our initial estimation, if, you, if I take you to the uh, previous page, you can see that we have estimated that some changes would be necessary in terms of the fixed asset. Fixed asset, uh, uh, there will be additional fixed asset. So if we increase fixed asset, we will have to adjust it with depreciation. And after adjusting depreciation, it will increase by 10%. Now, this is the asset side. So we, ha we have estimated our total asset for uh, 2006. It has increased from 845 to 929.5. Let's go to the liability side. Accounts payable, directly related to sales. These are short-term items generally connected to operating performance and connected to sales. Accruals. Accruals are also connected to salaries, in interest payments. So these are accrued expenses, generally salaries. Uh, these are connected to sales as well. If you need more people for sales function, you need to increase your accruals. Notes payable. Notes payable generally is a short-term loan. Sometimes in some books, they would suggest you to directly increase 10%, but some books will argue that, well, still we need to make a decision whether we are going to take loans or not. So notes payable is basically a loan. It, it's kind of a loan. So if we want to make a decision about a loan, we have to wait until the feedback function. Next one is long term bonds. Remember, bond is a financing function. It's not directly connected to sales. You may still need to increase your amount, but we need to wait until the feedback function 
in order to make the decision. Common stock, related, not related to sales. Therefore, we need to wait. Retain earnings. Now, retain earnings is also not directly related to sales, but this retain earnings in balance sheet is basically need to be updated based on retain earnings figure in the income statement. Now, look at this figure, 32.8. 32.8. Let me take you to the previous slide, go to income statement. Our addition to retain earnings is 32.8. So this is the figure coming from estimation that we have done the estimation in the income statement. It's coming from there. 32.8 is added to this year retain earnings in order to calculate the year uh, estimated figure 317.8 coming from 285. Now there is something here. Retain earnings, what is the retain earnings? Retain earnings for a yearly basis is the amount retained after paying dividend. So if you have net income, let me write it for you so that it is it is clear. Sorry, give me a moment. Uh, what is retained earnings? Retained earnings is basically, it can be calculated for yearly basis, can be calculated for the all together for the company's performance. Generally, it is net income minus dividend paid. Now, look at these two figures, quite interesting. If you want to pay a dividend, if you want to pay a dividend, your retained earnings will be much lesser. You will have much less cash. If you are taking an additional investment, you want to increase your sales by 10%, you need a lot of cash, but the company he has decided to pay a dividend. So if you pay out dividend, you may not have sufficient cash for your uh, new investment. So in that case, you may have to go for loan, you may have to go for a stock market in order to increase your liability. So some companies, they don't like to pay dividend. Large companies, they don't like to pay dividend. They are growth oriented company and they will save their retained earnings they will maximize their retained earnings in order to invest in new project. So a decision must be made here. Why I'm discussing this with you, a decision must be made whether this 32.8 million can be used by the company. When we are putting this here, when we are listing this 32.8 million here, we are deciding that the company will use it instantly. But the company has to make a decision. They have to talk to the shareholders. They have to call for a specific meeting in order to talk about whether this 32.8 million can be added or whether we should be waiting for it. So a feedback function must come up, but generally this is an accounting process. What we are doing here is an accounting process. Any retained earnings that is coming from income statement will be straight added in order to calculate the or update the retained earnings for the entire company. So 317.8 is the new retained earnings. So what we do is, we sometimes wait for the feedback function in order to make a decision whether the retained earnings will be added or not. But generally, following the accounting function, we'll straight add. After adding, we'll calculate total owner security, we'll calculate total liability and owner security, and we'll see whether there's any difference between the estimated total asset and estimated total liability. Remember, when it is a balance sheet, your total asset must be equal to your total liabilities. So let me write the basic accounting equation. You have learned it in your accounting courses. Asset equals liability plus owner's equity. Now here, our asset is, total estimated asset is 929.5. It is not equal not equal to uh, the total liability and owner's equity is 886.8. So obviously there is a gap and the gap is calculated for you, which we call AFN is 400, uh, 42.7. 42.7 million is the additional fund needed. Let me write it for you. The difference between these two is called AFN which is additional fund needed is 
minus 886.8. That gives us, if everything is okay, 42, sorry, 42.7 million. 42.7 million dollar is our uh, estimated figure that we need to collect from the market. This is the additional fund we need. What is the interpretation of this? Let me write one sentence for interpretation. This will help you to understand the fact. Uh, the interpretation would be company needs dollar 42.7 million to finance or let's say to support increase in sales by 10%. So in order to increase the sales by 10%, company will need 42.7 million from the market. Now, before we go for break, let me tell you that company has a number of decision to make. They will call for a feedback meeting and they will analyze these figures again. Uh, someone from the company financial managers or assistant financial managers will present this to the company board and company uh, operations board will look into each and every figure and will come up with a new decision whether the company is going to increase or decrease sales or not. Now, whether this 42.7 million can be financed from the market, whether the company needs to increase sales or decrease sales will be all decided in the feedback meeting. For now, our objective was to find out how much extra fund the company need in order to increase the sales by 10%. This is the fund, is actually your resources. So this is the additional resource you need in order to increase your sales by 10%. Now let me give you an example related to our life, everyday life. Let's say next semester, we'll have a hundred more students. If we have hundred more students next semester, in order to support these extra hundred students, we need investment in fixed asset. We need to buy new table, chairs and tables, we need to increase the capacity of our internet. We need to also have possibly a new cafeteria for them. So there are a lot of fixed investment needed. So when the company wants to increase their sales by 10%, they want to know how much is the additional resources they need. Uh, and for that resources, how much is the additional amount they need to gather. Remember finance function, the definition of finance, the basic definition is to make sure that you have the amount of money for financing to support your investment. So what is the use of fund and what is the source of fund must match. And in order to match here, to increase the sales by 10%, the company needs 42.7 million extra financing that the company has to decide now where this money, $42.7 million will come from. These explanations are given in the next slide. You can read them. In order to increase the sales, what we have to do and what additional measure you can take in order to adjust some of these figures. Uh, <clears throat> there are some other functions, uh, basic step before uh, we go into discussion about feedbacks. Uh, we'll take a break now, a big break. Uh, and when we come back, please have this, uh, please have this word file with you, possibly transfer this table to Excel so that it's easy for you to do. And we, what we will try to do is we will follow the suggestions given here and uh, we will try to um, use the sales growth and forecast balance sheet and income statement. So let's take a break. Now it is already 9.55, so we'll take a, a, at least 20 to 30 minutes break for the entire three hours of class. Uh, we will come back around 10.25. We'll come back at uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 10.25. We'll come back at 10.25. Let me write it here so that you don't forget it. And since you say that you don't see the conversation, so let me repeat, 10.25 is the return time, 10.25. So I'll see you all again at 10.25 and we'll do uh, some exercise with uh, how to forecast a balance sheet and income statement given simple example of one of the companies X plus Y is the NDHD. Thank you.
uh, I will keep the session on because uh, we are recording, so um, so that it does not interrupt our recording.